So let's discuss law stay away. So for many instances, what I realized is people, some of you are prone to getting in issues with the law. And, and it could be issues with police, you know, it could be issues with your management, issues at work. It could be just issues with anyone who's over you. And when you have issues like this, I always recommend you dealing with law stay away. And law stay away is good as well for those of you that want to keep things a bit private as well. So with law stay away, it's kind of like a force field that you're building and creating. And it protects you. And sometimes it protects you a little bit too much. So with situations for law stay away... Um, not only does it help you with the privacy that you need, it also keeps all types of law officials away. So if there is a time and point where you do need the law to be on your side, sometimes it can negatively push them back and you won't have anyone to help you. So always consider what you're doing when you're working with law stay away products. I see people working with it when they get in trouble. It's good to work with it before. Of course, which is the best thing to do. But in situations where you get into trouble and, you know, you're going through court cases and you're going to be back and forth and stuff like that. I do recommend that you kind of figure out first exactly what you're dealing with before you start using it. So say right now you have to go back and forth for divorce situations. First, find out what you're up against. Because if you go in and you use law stay away before your court case has happened and you didn't get to use it prior, the judge is going to be against you. Your lawyers are going to be against you. They're, everyone is going to be against you. Everyone is going to kind of shun you and actually stay away. It creates a force field, yes, but if you do too much of it, it'll create a block. So no police, no judge, nobody's going to want to be around you. Even if you have situations like, say, right now in in your apartment building or dealing with HOAs and, you know, um, rental situations. Nobody's going to want to be bothered with you. Nobody superior is going to want to be bothered from you, bothered with you. And it's going to block out as well information that is needed. Use it for your privacy concerns. Use it for family, work, kids, court cases, illegal situations, and even car, even for your car and stuff like that. So anything in which you want to push back anyone from being in your business, Honestly, I've been recommending it a lot this year for people that do not want background checks to be pulled up from them at work. And it works excellent for background checks. So if you're in a situation where you know you're going to be getting a job soon and you know that you may be, you know, smoking a little weed and you don't want nothing negatively to pop up or even for them to test you, do your law stay away. If you know you had some history back in the day doing certain things, do your law stay away so those, um, you know, those checks that they do could stay away. And they're also good for situations where you want to get a loan and you know that that credit report is not looking too good. Sometimes some people make them overlook it. So you can work law stay away with overlook and you can sweeten the other side to help you favorably have a better outcome as well. So use it in your favor. Consider things like, don't step too outside of the box and use too much of it to where nobody wants to help you. Use it to where you can really get the help that you need and push back situations to where the law can negatively affect you. So if you know that you're going to have a court case coming up, go to court, find out what you're against first. You can use law stay away for your opponents as well to keep the law off of them and back the way so that they don't get any help. So it could come into handy for a few things. So think... Think really, really good and consider the outcome for yourself. Consider the outcome for the opponent. Get a reading done and make sure that the, that it, that it's a really, really strong petition because a strong petition and heavy prayers are really, really going to help you. And you can always fall towards working with a saint. If your energy is not good enough, you're not that powerful, that's where you're bringing your ancestors. But you should bring your ancestors all the time to talk to, to get guidance. But the spirits and the saints, benevolent saints, your laws and your orishas that you're going to be working with, that's when you bring them in when you can't do anything. That's the best time when you're working. Even though it's spiritual work, yes, the spirits are always among you, but they're not always helping you. 
they're not always helping you. Your ancestors could be watching, but if you're not asking them for nothing, that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to jump up and just start helping you. You want to ask them for certain things when in need. But if you're powerful enough and you've learned your roots, your herbs, how to power up candles, power roots, and you've, you're able to really push a ritual with jars and, and um, bottle spells and even your baths, which I recommend you doing on a consistent basis, work with yourself first. And if you cannot work with yourself, then you, cons you, you consult with somebody, a root worker that can help you. And you go to your ancestors, you go to the benevolent, and you ask them for the help.